Look at you. You are beautiful. Well, to be honest, some more than others. <laughs> but that's okay. That's okay. That's because you're different. We are all different. We've got different faces, different smiles. We laugh at different jokes. No wonder that we like different things. Some of us like running. I don't like it. Some like dancing. Some even like Brussels sprouts, even if many of us dislike them. Yet there is one thing that we all dislike, something that we are all forced to do, but that we would put at the top of a wish list of things that should disappear from the face of the earth. And that is paying taxes. Who likes paying taxes in this room? Who wakes up in the morning saying, oh, what a beautiful day. Today, I'm filing my tax return. <laughs> Do you know anyone like this? Well, in this room, there is at least one person who likes paying taxes. <laughs> it's me. Well, you'll think, of course, he likes paying taxes. He lives on taxes, on other people's taxes. He's a tax law professor in a tax finance university and a tax lawyer. But I'm not saying that as a tax professional. I'm saying that as a tax-paying citizen, just like you. Taxes bring us the best out of our society. Taxes are the best investment you and I could ever make for us, for children, for our community. But I can still see that you are not fully convinced. <laughs> That's because of three main reasons. Irrationality first. We've got in ourselves this irrational tax aversion. We do not like taxes and we, we do not even know why. I'll explain you how irrational this aversion is. Ignorance. We do not know enough how much taxes contribute to our peace, our wealth, our well-being. And finally, improvement. Of course, our tax system are not perfect, otherwise I wouldn't have a job. But we can improve them, we can reform them, and I'll show you how. But first, look at that picture. What do you see? Some would say a dog. No, it's not a dog, because dogs don't drive. <laughs> this is a shopping animal, the average consumer. A study was made in the US showing that more than 50% of the people would drive half an hour at the other side of the city to buy a television for a 9% discount. These figures jumped to 75% if the discount was granted in the form of a tax rebate. And the most absurd thing, even if the value of the tax rebate was lower than 9%, actually 8%, so people would lose money to pay less taxes. Isn't it absurd? Another example, who hasn't bought overpriced and unnecessary goods in a shop just because it was tax-free. We all know that feeling. Huh? So when it comes to taxation, we're completely irrational. Where does this irrationality come from? Three main reasons. History, ideology, and inequality. At least the feeling of inequality. History. You know him. You've seen the cartoon. Robin Hood. Robin Hood used to steal tax money from King John to redistribute it to the poor. Well, I don't know if Robin Hood existed, but King John did. And his high taxes too, that he mainly used to wage wars in, in Britain and uh, on the continent. King John, he was one of the worst kings in British history. But he's remembered even today because 800 years ago, he granted to his people the Grand Charter, 
a document through which he reduced his power to impose taxes. And this Grand Charter is still part of the UK Constitution today. But how come that we do not walk around carrying swords or wearing tight green pants, at least not in public? We do not burn witches or try pigs in a court, but still we see taxes as threatening as they were in the Middle Ages. That's because of ideology. We have deep in our minds this motto, more freedom means less taxes. Less taxes means more freedom. You know him. <laughs> During the electoral campaign, then he won. He said that it was, it was smart not to pay taxes. That money would be squandered by the government if it did pay. Well, he won on this anti-tax ideology. Despite all of his voters, in one way or another, benefiting from tax-funded government services. Inequality. When we see those scandals, like the Panama Papers, or the offshore leaks, or the Lux leaks, or the Swiss leaks, or any leaks you want, we get angry because we have the impression that we are the only ones paying taxes, while the rich and the powerful do not pay. That's the impression we get from the media. But what we do not see in the media is that the vast majority of companies, of individuals, pay their taxes, honestly, regularly, and that contributes to our peace, wealth, and well-being. Peace. Let's imagine for a second what a world without taxes would be. Let's imagine a city. Imagine streets. Imagine parks. Imagine schools, hospitals, even courts, prisons fire stations, police stations. Imagine the people, nurses, street cleaners, firemen, police officers, teachers, doctors, librarians. Well, in a tax-free world, forget about them. They do not exist. Would you like to live in such a world? I personally wouldn't. Well, maybe some of you would say, well, at least I would have my freedom. At least I would have my property. Have you ever thought of what property and freedom mean in such a world? Empty words, abstract concepts, without anyone, without any institution to secure them. But taxes do not only protect us from the worst, they also help us achieve the best uh, in life. Thanks to our high taxes, we have reached a level of peace, wealth, and well-being that is unmatched in world history. Peace. Have you ever compared the list of the highest tax country with the Global Peace Index? I did. These are the most peaceful countries in the world. And look, the first five countries Seven out of the first ten, 15 out of the first 22 most peaceful countries in the world are high-tax countries. Some of you would probably tell me, well, they're, they're peaceful because they're rich, and they're rich because they have a strong economy, boosted by the private sector, and that despite high taxes. That's untrue, because taxes, they not destroy wealth, they contribute to build it. Taxes foster business. With taxes, government builds a stable legal framework, efficient infrastructure, a reliable financial system, access to credit. Without them, businesses can, cannot start, let alone grow. Taxes foster jobs too. Not only public jobs, government jobs, but also private jobs, because with tax money, Government buys huge quantities of services and goods from private businesses. Taxes also foster innovation. 
with tax money, government can make long-term risky investments that the private sector would not do because too risky. And sometimes these investments yield beyond the wildest ex expectations. To give you some example, the World Wide Web, the Internet, the GPS, the microchip, even the Google algorithm was developed thanks to tax-funded uh, research program. Here in Louvain-la-Neuve, 20 years ago, a federal research grant funded with tax money helped researchers developing the first implementation of the blockchain technology, which today makes the Internet secure worldwide. Would you think that this money was squandered by the government? I certainly wouldn't. And look at that country, Denmark, number one. Number one in what? Denmark is the highest taxing country in the world. It is also the happiest country. In 2016, Denmark top, topped the World Happiness Report. And many other high-tax countries figured well in this World Happiness Report. Why? Because with tax money, we do not only create wealth, we also redistribute it, redistribute it contributing to the overall well-being. Think about universal health care, universal education, uh, programs to help homeless people, culture, uh, nature protection, and many other things that contribute to our well-being. So probably taxes make us much happier than we thought. But we can be happy taxpayer without having to be naive or passive. Our tax system, well, they need reform. They, to a certain extent, tax rules look like they've been written with a typing machine, and we are now in the digital era. We need change. We need more equity, more transparency, and more participation. More equity. Tax rules, well, they're outdated and complicated, and that creates unfair advantages for some and undue burdens for others. We need simplification. We need tax rules that are in line with the development of the economy, because we tend to overtax traditional forms of wealth, like labor and entrepreneurship, while forgetting the newer one, the other ones. We need also more coordination at the international level. We need more global tax rule, less domestic, to be able to have a common approach to global phenomena, like, for example, cross-border pollution, multinational company, international flows of capital. We need more cooperation in order to increase transparency. We did a lot in the last years, as regards international exchange of information. So we are on the good path, on the right path. But we have to continue. And we need also transparency, not only as regards how money is spent, uh, we need also transparency as regards government programs. We have to be more participative. We have to be more collaborative. We have to be more innovative as regards of our power as citizen, as the state first investor to reappropriate ourselves our tax system. So, if we get rid of our irrational tax aversion, if we are able to realize that our taxes contribute to our peace, our wealth, and well-being, and if we are able to make the necessary reforms, then we will be able to pay taxes with more conviction. And conviction is what we need today. When we look at the challenges that lie ahead, global warming, 
rising social inequalities, security threats of all kinds, to name but a few. When we look at those challenging, as individuals, we may feel powerless. But as we have seen in history, against challenges like starvation, wars, disease, if we pull our energy together, if we pull our creativity together, if we invest in our collective institutions, we are much stronger. We are a much strong society. But remember, there is no strong society without strong institutions. And there is no strong institution without proper investment. So, maybe, Changing the world could begin with paying your taxes. And if that does not make you happy, I really don't know what will. Thank you.